So this video is going to be the second part of this Halloween video where we're going to be painting and finishing up this skull. No introductory stuff, that was all in the first video from two weeks ago. We're just going to pick this one up from where we left off. The first thing that I want to do here is set a really sharp edge between the skull and the background itself. There's a bunch of ways to go about doing this, but I'm going to use some frisket film here. I usually buy this stuff in a large roll, so I just cut off a piece here, laid it on, and then cut out along the edge. I'm zooming in here so you can see what this looks like, and it's very simple to do. All I'm doing is following my initial line drawing that I drew in with a pencil. If you're new to cutting out frisket film, it's not difficult to do. It takes a bit of practice, but after a few times, you'll get it down. To me, it kind of feels like line drawing or contour drawing. One tip that I'd give you is just try not to use too much pressure. The blade is very sharp, so just a light amount will go a really long way in just cutting that and not cutting into the canvas. Once I have this cleanly cut out, I'm just going over to my airbrush, spraying at 20 PSI, and I'm using the color that we mixed in the first part of this video. I'm going to lay this paint on pretty heavily so that it looks like a pure black, dark black background. And one thing that I like to do when I'm spraying over frisket is kind of angle my airbrush in the opposite direction. As you can see here, I'm aiming my airbrush over to the left. And since I'm spraying a heavy amount of paint, this is going to help prevent that paint from running underneath the frisket. Another way that you can go about this is just slowly build up the value. Just add a small amount of paint, let it dry for a minute or so, and then add some more. Either way is fine. The goal here is just to keep that paint on the outside of the frisket and not underneath it. Just go slow when you're painting over frisket and you'll be just fine. So you can see here, when I pull this off, we get a nice, clean, sharp edge. What I want to do from here is start painting inside the nasal bone, basically just painting the nose here. Now this edge isn't straight, there's a bunch of curves and transitions, so what I'm using is a ripped piece of paper, and all I'm doing is just angling it in different directions and then spraying over it. I'm following my initial line drawing, and I'm spraying over to the right. And if you look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen, you'll see that this area in here is basically a solid color of black. So I'll just work my way along the outline, spraying those edges in, once I have that done, I could just spray in the center freehand. And just like painting the edge of the skull, if you don't want to use ripped paper here or a shield, you could use frisket film. That'll work just fine. I generally prefer using freehand shields or ripped piece of paper just because you could do it so fast. You can kind of move around from one part of the painting to another. And the major benefit is that it's just so much easier to see your painting and your values when you're using a shield. So once the nose is painted in, you could see that I just kind of dusted some of this paint around the nasal bone and then just below it. And the reason for this is very simple, just to have something to erase into. But before I get to that eraser, I'm just going to add some texture in using a ripped piece of paper, some freehand, and that skin texture template. I always like to build up my painting in layers, so adding the texture first really helps me out. You'll see later on as I erase into this, most of this texture is actually going to disappear. But a small amount of this texture will remain there, and I think that's kind of one of the keys to making a painting look more advanced than it really is. Because when you look at a final painting, you're not seeing each individual layer, you're seeing the entire painting as a whole. So now moving along to the eraser, I'm working here right on the edge of the nasal bone where it connects between this highlight on the right side of it and the shadow off to the left. Now an electric eraser like this is going to give a lot of texture, which is what I want. I'm barely touching this eraser to the canvas. It's almost just like kind of floating over the edge of it. And what I'm trying to do here is to have these eraser marks overlapping so it doesn't look like a bunch of small highlights, but instead one large one. So as I'm erasing out this area, I'm trying to erase out in circular motions, each one of these circles overlapping the one that I did before. If you watched any of my other tutorials, this is the exact same thing that I do when I'm erasing out with a stick eraser. And this technique just comes from my drawing. When I draw with a pencil, I like to blend with a blending stump. And when I blend, I'm just doing the same thing, small circular motions. To me, these small circles can give you an even texture and a pretty even value. As long as you work slowly, work from one area to another. You can't rush this. This is something that you have to spend some time with because if you start erasing out and some areas are really bright and some are darker, you're not going to get an even tone. It's going to look like either some holes or some really bright highlights in the texture. And that's not what we're going for here. And then I'm just going to repeat that process starting from the top on the nasal bone down to the side of this bone, which is called the maxilla. Sometimes when I erase, I pull out too much paint. So then I just go back to the airbrush, glaze them over the top, erase into it again. Just build them up layer after layer. There's a dark soft shadow here on that transition point between the zygomatic bone and the maxilla. So all I did here was spray it in freehand 
and just sprayed a good amount of paint to get it pure black. And while you're erasing, I recommend using all different types. You'll see me using a stick, an electric eraser, and that larger Tombow sand eraser. Each one's going to work better for different parts of your painting, so give them all a shot. Now as we move down to this area underneath the nose, this is still the same bone, this is the maxilla, but at the bottom of it where the teeth connect, you're going to see a ton of textures, a bunch of ridges and sockets and creases. This part is called the alveolar process, and like I said, it's where the teeth connect. The way that I'm going to go about painting this is starting first with a ripped piece of paper and painting in the shadows. The light hitting the teeth here is over to the right, so that means highlights are going to be on the right, shadows off to the left. And around this area, there's just going to be a bunch of small creases and ridges, so I want to make sure that I pay attention to the reference and paint these in where I see them. As always though, I'm not just making these up, I'm following my line drawing, and that's always going to be my guide. Once I get a shadow painted in over to the right, I'm just going to use my eraser to erase out the corresponding highlight to the left of each one. And you don't have to follow this exact technique, if you want you could add the highlights first, and then add the corresponding shadow over to the right. Really doesn't matter. The important thing here though is that we need to add a lot of contrast. I need to add a good amount of this black paint in order to make those highlights look bright. And even though this part of the painting looks very complicated, I assure you that it's not. It's the same as everything else. The trick to getting this down, like everything in painting, is to work slowly. Don't rush. I always try to keep the time down in the video so I speed through a lot of stuff because it'll get kind of boring if I explain each part. But I'm actually working very slowly here. All I did was start on the left side and then slowly work my way over to the right. And once I added in a value, a texture, a highlight, whatever, I always use that as a reference to look at the surrounding area, the area that I painted before. Because when a new area is painted in, you're going to see the surrounding area a little bit differently. So in a lot of this painting, you'll see me kind of jumping back to an area that I painted before, maybe erasing out some paint, making it lighter, or using the airbrush to darken up some areas. But if you look at this part of the painting right now, you'll just see that it's just a combination of some dark areas next to some lighter areas. The dark areas on the right, light areas on the left. If you're just starting out in painting, a very common thing that happens, and I know this because it happened to me back when I started, is that you're so eager to see what the full painting looks like or the final painting looks like that you start to rush. And with an area like this that has so much detail, so many little shadows and highlights, there's just no way to do this fast. You have to work slowly on it. So a great exercise that I recommend doing is just choosing one small part of the painting like I'm showing here. And then when you sit down to paint, just tell yourself that this is the only part of the painting that I'm going to complete in this sitting. I'm not going to go anywhere else. And a small part of the painting like this may take you 10 minutes or it may take you a few hours. It all depends on how you paint. But the point here is just to learn to slow down and not jump ahead. Say that I'm going to paint one part of the painting and then I'm going to walk away. When you walk away and come back to look at it, you're going to see it differently. Your eyes are going to adjust because you did something else in that time. And I guarantee you, when you come back to look at it, you're going to see it differently. You're going to see some areas that need to be changed. Some areas may look too dark. Some areas may look too bright. And then once you do this a few times and begin to slow down, then just go back to normal painting. But it's a really good idea to try to just work on one part at a time. That's what I always do, and I really just cannot recommend it enough. But of course, everyone's going to be different. This is just what works for me and the way that I've always approached painting. After I got a lot of this texture in, one thing that I found to work very well here, just to add that little bit extra, is using this Tombow eraser where I cut out an angle at the end of it. A sharp angle like this allows me to get into all these highlights just one more time and just make a pass or two over the top of them. I'm not using too much pressure here, just a small amount, and what it's doing here is just pulling out a small random amount of paint in each one of these highlights, making them slightly brighter. As I move along to the right here in this area that's circled, you can see that a lot of this is in a highlight. And remember, to get something to look bright, to make it look like it's in a highlight, you need dark surrounding it. If you look at my completed painting, you'll see exactly that. Pure black around it to the right, and also in that shadow on the edge of the zygomatic bone. These dark values are so, so important for this effect to work. And so as I work into this area, I'll be using my electric eraser a lot, just to remove out as much paint as I can. And you'll see that in some of this area too, that I added down a good amount of black paint first, and normally black paint's very difficult to erase, but since I'm using the electric eraser, which is so aggressive, 
I don't really have to worry about that because the electric eraser is going to cut right through the black paint. And let me show you this technique one more time in real time so you can see how it works to get an even value of texture rather than a bunch of small dots. So let's take a look at this highlight right here, which is very bright in the final painting. Now what's going on here is that this area is just a bunch of small highlights, a bunch of small circles next to each other. But when you're looking at this whole painting, you don't see it like that. You just see it as a massive highlight that has some texture in it. And as I said before, I'm barely touching the electric eraser to the canvas. And when I erase out here, I'm just erasing in small circular motions, just rotating it like I would a pencil. And as long as you take your time when you're using the electric eraser, you can really get an even value in an area of your painting that has a similar texture across it like you're seeing here. And just a side note, I found that this works very well when you're looking for a gritty, grungy texture like what we're seeing here on the skull. I would also use this technique if I was painting metal, something to get a really bright highlight and get some texture in it, make it look like there's some rust on it. But I would rarely use this on something like a portrait, something where I'm going for a smoother look it's just going to look too aggressive and it's going to make the skin look like sandpaper. But with that said, there's definitely areas on a portrait where it can be useful, maybe on a very bright specular highlight on the nose or if the skin is wet. But again, it's just another tool and a technique that you could add to your bag of tricks. And with more techniques and tools available to you, it's going to make you a better painter, even if you don't use them that often. So in a future painting, when something comes up and you feel like you may need this type of texture, you have it ready to go and you could add it to your painting. Now, as I was looking at the reference photo, I noticed that there were a bunch of small lines in this part of the painting. And there didn't look like there was that much order to them, so instead of freehand painting each one, I decided to use my shield here, and all I'm doing is spraying over it and moving it left and right and up and down. So instead of using the skin texture template to get a bunch of dots, I was able to use it for something different and get a bunch of small lines. I thought that this texture looked pretty unique, and I decided to keep it. And even as I moved along further into the painting, I added this in a few more areas. To me, it almost looked like some scratch marks, so something I definitely wanted to keep in the final painting. And then for the right side here, the last part of this painting, so much of this was hidden in shadow. So what I decided to do was just use a ripped piece of paper like what we did before on the teeth and spray in some shadows to get some edges in there. And then I used the black paint to glaze over the top of this just to push everything away into that shadow. That's where I'm going to finish this one up. I do hope that this two-part painting tutorial was helpful. And I know that I went through a lot of information and a lot of techniques very quickly in this one. But my hope is to show that painting is not a process that's always straightforward, like following a recipe. Every painting for me is all about trying the techniques that I know, experimenting with new ones, failing, and then trying to patch up those failures. And if your final painting didn't come out as good as you hoped it would, you have a great excuse to try it again and start a new one. So my advice, like always, is just to keep on painting and approach each new painting with enthusiasm, thinking that this one is going to be the best one that I've painted so far. Of course, you find out when you finish it that it never is, but that excitement of starting a new painting and thinking this time I'm going to get it right really makes the whole process so much fun. You'll always be seeing and paying attention to something new and learning something new. And if you enjoy that process, painting kind of becomes like a companion that'll stick with you for the rest of your life. And I just think that's a very special and important thing to have. So that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. I wish you all the best in your painting. And of course, I want to say thank you so much to the generous and kind support of the channel members. I'd like to welcome Robert, and I'd also like to welcome Crossroads and Kevin, both at Extremely Generous Tier 3s, so thank you guys and welcome to the channel. I have a new members video coming up this week, and of course I will be back here next Friday, so I'll see you guys then.